So let me just provide a bit of background to um, this collaborative project that we've been involved with. Um, between ourselves, the Geological Survey of Finland, and we're geologists, and the museum staff here at the Hala Salemi Museum. And I'm standing in front of two very nice paintings that Becca Hallinan had, has produced. And what we're interested to, do, to find out as geologists is uh, the paints that he used, what were their compositions? Um, what types of minerals have been mixed with linseed oil and other materials to create these beautiful paintings behind me? For example, um, the complexion of the people here. How did he manage to get that colour? The white shirt there in that figure uh, in the, in the near, near ground of that painting, what, what sort of material was mixed with the linseed oil and the other materials to make that white colour? And it became then uh, an interesting project that we wanted to just investigate what was the mineralogy. And we had to do this by looking at individual paint tubes and pigment fragments. And, and what you're about to hear and see then is our little story about how we managed to unravel the history of Pekka Hallinan's paints. Okay, well, before we actually go on and describe what we've discovered from the Pekka Hallinan Museum collection here, I just wanted to review what oil paint actually is. An oil paint is an interesting mixture of natural materials, such as crushed up minerals. Sometimes we add man-made materials, so we've, we've made some metallic compounds and we mix those together. And then finally that's all bound together with something like linseed oil or egg yolk to make it flow better when the artist is painting. And here we have some lovely examples of um, paint tubes, uh, one of Pekka Hallinan's um, palettes and some other memorabilia here. And so we're going to now have a look at what we've discovered by examining these items in extreme detail. Eli tämä on röntgentomografialaite. Tällä laitteella me voidaan katsoa kappaleen sisään ilman, että sille itse näytteelle tapahtuu mitään. Eli tällaisen historiallisen näytteen kanssa, kun näytteen leikkaaminen auki fyysisesti ja jo optio, niin tämä on meidän seuraavaksi paras vaihtoehto. Eli laitteessa Näyte pyörii, otetaan siitä röntgenkuvia ja niistä voidaan sitten matemaattisesti rakentaa 3D-malli näytteestä. Tomografialaitteella otettiin kolmeulotteisia kuvia maalituupeista ja nyt ollaan laitteella, jonka nimi on Micro XRF. Ja tässä sitten analysoidaan koostumuksia, näiden maalejen koostumuksia. Tässä ruudulla näkyy kuvassa taas erivärisiä pigmentinpaloja tai maalinpaloja. Ja sitten tota, ne ajetaan tällä laitteella ja me saadaan niiden ä, alkuainepitoisuudet. Eli tässä näkyy, että tästä yhdessä maalissa on elohopea, näkyy tällaisena pinkkinä värinä. Tässä on neljä eri maalinäytettä ja tämä yksi on hyvin tämmöinen kalsiumrikas. Tässä näkyy lyijyä ja sinkkiä. Ä, täällä on taas kromi, tulee esille ja täällä on sitten rautarikas maalin kappale. Ja sen jälkeen, kun me ollaan katsottu tällä laitteella näitä maalinpaloja, niin me siirrytään yläkertaan, jossa me katsotaan tarkemmin suuremmalla, suuremmalla suurennoksella, miltä ne maalit näyttää. Nyt me ollaan täällä pyyhkäisyelektronimikroskooppilaboratoriossa. Ja tällä pyyhkäisyelektronimikroskoopilla me päästään kurkistamaan mikrometritasolla, miltä ne maalit näyttää ja ottamaan niistä kemiallinen koostumus. Tässä näytepidikkeessä on nyt niitä maalinpaloja, mitä me ollaan sieltä Halosenniemen museosta kerätty. Osa on maalituubeista irrotettuja paloja ja osa on sitten siellä astiassa, missä nämä vanhat maalituubit on. Niin niiden pohjalta kerättyjä paloja ja pyrittiin keräämään joka värisiä maalinpaloja, jotta saadaan mahdollisimman kattava selvitys, että mistä aineista ne maalit on koostuneet. Tässä ruudulla näkyy nyt äh, elektronisuihkun alla on punainen maali ja tässä on tuhatkertainen suurennos tästä maalista. Ja tässä näkyy hienosti tämmönen, tota, nämä kuutiolliset äh, mineraalikiteet, joista se maali koostuu. Ja, tota, tässä, tässä kuvassa niin tämä on harmaa kuva ja mitä kirkkaampana kuvassa tämä materiaali näkyy, niin sen tiheämpää se on. Eli hiiliteippi, jolle nämä maalinpalat on laitettu, niin on ihan mustaa ja sitten tämä, tämä aine, tämä maali, niin se näyttää tämmöiseltä vähän vaaleemman harmaalta. Ja nyt me otetaan analyysi yhdestä näistä kiteestä. Ja jokaisella materiaalilla on 
ihan omanlainen spektri. Ja, ja tässä näkyy nyt, tässä spektrissä nousee elohopean piikki ja rikin piikki. Eli nyt me saadaan tietää, että tämä punainen maali koostuu elohopeasta ja rikistä, eli se on tämmöinen elohopea sulfidi, sinoperi niminen mineraali. Okay, now what we have here of course is a very nice example of one of the original paint tubes here at the museum. It's we believe uh, a white paint tube. The label has gone because it's very old and the paint has actually effectively been squeezed out mostly by the artist. The tube we think and we have now confirmed is typically made from tin metal and it has a screw top and clearly the artist has been squeezing all over to try and get as much of the paint out as possible. But it wasn't always the case that artists could use paint tubes. In fact, before paint tubes were invented, it was problematic. On a day like today, nice sunny day, really cold outside, Pekka Hallinan would have loved to have gone out to capture the scene. But if he didn't have a paint tube, he would have probably kept his paint in a container, such as a pig's bladder or something like that and that would have been prone to leakage. It wouldn't have uh, done very well in the cold. But when uh, John Rand invented the paint tube in 1841, that completely revolutionized the way artists could operate. For the first time, they could go in the field, they could go on site and actually capture their art um, without any problem. Because this is actually a squeezable tube with a screw cap and could actually be rolled up and it, it was enabling the paint to be preserved for many months and in some cases many years. So thanks to John Rand then and his great invention, we were able to put more and more different types of colours into the tubes, which led to a whole explosion of different ways of painting um, um, and uh, different types of art. And in fact, the Impressionism movement, we believe, started because of this invention around about 1840s. And it's so lovely that we've been able to actually examine these tubes in great detail at the museum because they've been uh, very nicely archived. Well, we've measured many paint fragments and paint tubes from the museum, and I can't go through all of them today, and some of them are on display, in fact, as part of the exhibit. But what I would like to say is that there's one special one. It's called 880, we labelled it that way. It's a pinky colour, it's like a sort of salmon pink colour. In fact, it's not dissimilar to perhaps the paint that Becca Helen and May have used to paint this painting behind me. Now, we picked it and chose it because we thought it would be interesting because of its colour, but when we put it under the scanning electron microscope, it revealed things that we just couldn't believe. For example, um, we saw fossils in here, and, and, and uh, these fossils are very, very small. They're called microfossils. They can't be seen with human vision. We need the scanning electron microscope to see them. And we know what they are, because as geologists, we're trained to recognize different shapes and sizes of fossils. And we know that these fossils are likely to have come from rocks that were Cretaceous in age. So that's around about 100 million years ago. In fact, because we can identify the fossils, we actually know exactly what the rock was that was used to be crushed to be added to the pigment. We, in fact, think this has come from English chalk, from the um, south coast of the UK. And these coccoliths have now ended up inside this um, pigment. Now, the interesting thing about coccoliths is that they have calcareous skeletons. And when they are, are alive, they're, um, they're forming like little, little ball-shaped um, structures. And then when they die, they all fall apart and they just form little platelets. And that's what we see now in the imagery but they did not survive, many of them did not survive, a mass extinction event that took place about 60 million years ago when a major meteorite hit the Earth. And not only did they not survive, the dinosaurs were actually killed off, mostly again by this catastrophic event, around about, as I say, 60 million years ago. Some did survive though, and they are around in our oceans today, and they're very valuable because blue-green algae, they control the ecosystem in the oceans. They are fantastic food for whales and large mammals. But what's really e excellent and interesting about them is that they, because they are made of calcium carbonate, they capture carbon from the atmosphere. And then when they die, they obviously take that carbon down to the bottom of the ocean. So they're actually doing their bit in terms of um, controlling the carbon balance of the planet. But what we found fascinating and really interesting was that 
Pekka Hallinan had no idea that he was actually painting with fossils, and this is one of the exciting outcomes of our study, that we were able to show that he had done that, in fact. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this little introduction to our study with the museum staff here at Hello Tsunami. And just to, just to end off, really, we, we've been so inspired by this project, we, we thought it would be nice if we could actually try and make our own paints and recreate what the old masters were painting with. And what you can see in front of me here is a series of crushed up mineral products that give us different colours from blues to browns to black. They even have some natural chalk here. And this is just an experiment to actually show you and, and demonstrate how minerals actually give rise to different colours that can be mixed with linseed oil or egg yolk and other binders plus other additives to produce what is now oil paint. And this has really just been a lovely um, study because um, the next phase of this will be actually to image the actual paintings and the palette and that's the next phase of our study when we look forward to presenting those results to you when they're ready. So thank you for listening and we hope you enjoy the exhibition.